divided by. This is John. He hasn't worked this hard to only get this far with his cholesterol. Taken with a statin, Lectio can lower bad cholesterol and keep it low with two doses a year. Side effects were injection site reaction, joint pain, urinary tract infection, diarrhea, chest cold, pain in legs or arms, and shortness of breath. With Lecfio, lowering cholesterol becomes just one more thing life throws your way. Ask your doctor about Lecfio. Lower, longer, Lecfio. Monday on ET, we've got Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart. They're out of control ET interview and even wilder confessions. And it was supposed to be Kevin and I together for the Oscars. Oh, yeah. oh my well, what God. Happened? Wait, is this truth or is, is this? Who f***ed that one up? Okay, now that... Would we have seen the real husbands of Hollywood on the Oscar stage? Yes, we would have. <laughs> that would have been a whole problem. Yeah. And a big thank you to Bahamar Resort for letting us mix work and play here this week. Happening now. $3.73 a gallon. Haven't seen that in a while. Gas prices are dropping. Coming up, why that is and what you can expect in the weeks ahead. Why there's growing concern that more children are at risk from devastating but preventable diseases. Why some say childhood vaccine levels are at their lowest in 30 years. Next. Soon we'll take a look at a few showers on the radar screen. Talk about the weekend weather, including increasing Saharan dust and when it's going to be the most noticeable. News at 5 starts right now. First at five, we begin with the cost of filling up your gas tank. You've likely noticed the price at the pump continues to slide downward. Yeah, it's at least some relief as we pay inflated prices on just about everywhere else. Why the drop, though? How long will it last? Here's consumer reporter Marilyn Moritz. Tonight, something rare at the gas pump. Relief. $51, that's better than... 72. <laughs> Gas for less than four bucks a gallon is a welcome and more common sight. Lorenzo Pimentel says he was paying more than $200 a week to drive to job sites. I saw 373. I was like, I'm going to put some right now. <laughs> you can't pass Before it goes back up. The average price now is 402, according to AAA, tumbling 18 cents in just the past week, 65 cents in the past month. And that's significant. If you have an average size tank, it's now costing you $10 less to fill up your tank than it did just one month ago. Why the plunge? Analysts say supplies are up and demand is cool amid concerns of high inflation and an economic slowdown. As for how long this relief will last? I think there's certainly some downside potential here the next one to two weeks, maybe into the third week. Beyond that, it's a little bit more hazy because of the way the economy could move. Despite the decline in gas prices, we're still paying a dollar and a quarter per gallon more than last year. And higher prices on just about everything have taken a toll. I had to go out and get a job. At 70 years old, Johnny Stevenson is back at work and filling her tank. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I want to give you an update now on the number of monkeypox cases in Bear County. SA Metro Health saying they've confirmed one additional case, bringing the total case count to three, at least for now. The first two cases reported by Metro Health yesterday, Director Claude Jacobs said the risk to the public remains low. Right now, there are 43 confirmed cases in the state. Monkeypox, a viral disease that causes skin lesions and rashes in the genital groin and anal regions. Symptoms include fever, chills, headaches, muscle aches, exhaustion, and swollen lymph nodes. New at five, four men arrested in New Braunfels after police say they were exposing themselves in restrooms at Landa Park. The New Braunfels Police Department posting this on Facebook. Yeah, and three of those four are not young men. Police say 81 year old, 81-year-old John Scott, 66-year-old Ronald Gossett, 37-year-old Cesar Intariano, and 69-year-old James Kofakis are charged with indecent exposure. The incidents happened last month. The New Braunfels Police Department says no minors were involved. San Antonio police investigating a burglary and a car theft that ended with a shooting. They say the victim reported their keys and wallet were stolen from the vehicle at around noontime. They also accused that suspect of going to their home and stealing their car. About 30 minutes after that report, SAPD says someone saw the stolen vehicle, went after it, and at some point fired a shot at the suspect. He was hit in the finger and crashed at the Bill Miller's barbecue on Calabrian General McMullen. The shooter has not been caught. 
That theft is still being investigated. He's also looking for this guy. He's accused of robbing someone at gunpoint back on May 24th. It happened at a business on I-35 and Ritterman Road. These photos taken from surveillance cameras. If you know who he is, you're asked to call SAPD at 210-207-0300. We are still working to learn the name of a man who died in a rollover crash last night. That wreck happening around 2 a.m. near New Mathis Road and Cannon Wood Drive. That's in South Bear County. The sheriff's office says the man had just left a nearby bar when he lost control of the truck and went off road into a ditch. He also drove into a concrete driveway and the truck flipped. Deputies did find open containers inside the truck. The man died at the scene. No one else was hurt. Let's check traffic on this Friday, and we're going to take you to the camera at US 90 at State Highway 211. Now, yesterday, this was a problem area. It was a big backup there with some construction or something going on, but much a different story on this Friday afternoon. And we go to different parts of town and we actually have a few showers to talk about. Not a lot on the radar screen, but a few downpours for some lucky communities here and there. This is all we have in our area, parts of Kamal County, especially Smithson Valley area over toward New Braunfels, seen some downpours. I want to focus on this one right here. This one just developed in Stone Oak on the far north side of town. And the heaviest rain is basically just north of 1604, uh, headed toward Camp Bullis. And a little bit of lightning associated with this as well. Well, it's raining at a pretty good clip within this downpour. The heaviest rain right now, uh, basically Blanco Road eastward all the way into other parts of Stone Oak that are just west of 281. So that's where we have the heaviest rain here. Now this shower, it's moving at about 12 to 15 or 10 to 15 miles per hour. So we can time it out a little bit and see when it would get to some areas uh, downstream here. There we go. Let's plot that out. And looking at the rim at about 523, UTSA at about 536, making it to Brandeis High School at about 548 and Gray Forest at 549. That's assuming that it stays intact and it doesn't fall apart before that time because these are going to be fairly short-lived downpours, but at least we have a few to talk about. We'll take a closer look at those up in Comal County coming up later, but I want to quickly take a look at our weather watchers yesterday. Rolling Garcia Leon Springs, two inches of rain. Myco, 0.19. Right now, Canyon Lake, 92 degrees. We'll talk about the weekend when the Saharan dust will be the thickest coming right up. Some nice rain to beat the heat. And speaking of the heat, the owner of a downtown cafe across the street from Travis Park wanting to help those who can't escape these temperatures. Tyler Ibera owns Cafe Azteca on Jefferson Street. He says it's not unusual to see people outside trapped in the heat, but this summer the temperatures have been so high he felt the need to help out. So Ibarra took a photo and he shared it on social media, asking others to step up. There's only so, so many times people can walk by and not do anything. And so for me, um, having them across the street, having a business, I feel like it's my responsibility um, to help out whoever is in the vicinity of the business. And uh, th that's what it means to me uh, to be part of the community. Ibarra says that he was overwhelmed with the response. People started donating water, food, and hygiene necessities. Some of it was handed out last weekend, and they're going to do it again tomorrow and Sunday. If you want to help out, they are still accepting donations. 988. Not a familiar set of numbers, but starting tomorrow, it will be the new phone number for the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Just three numbers and anyone in the U.S. will be able to talk, text or chat with a trained mental health counselor. And already there's expected to be an influx of calls. Three numbers, 988, will soon put you in touch with a trained crisis counselor. It really treats mental health on par with physical health, just like we have 911. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline started in 2005, but as a 10-digit number. In 2020, the call line received 3.6 million calls, chats, and texts. That number is expected to double in the first year of rolling out 988. The number that you call is the therapeutic intervention, unlike 911, which is more of a dispatch center for medical problems. But with more than 200 call centers nationwide already stretched thin, some mental health groups are worried 988 could exhaust resources and result in longer wait times and even dropped calls. Dr. Christine U. Moutier, chief medical officer for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, says it's crucial for states to get behind the local crisis centers and back mental health resources. She says easy access to mental health help is critical in saving lives. 
in the great majority of cases, suicidal ideation is reduced, distress is reduced, and oftentimes individuals are ready to take that next step. The suicide hotline or 988 operates 24 seven to get people the help they need no matter what time of day it is. You can read more about the story right now on our website, ksat.com. And now to the latest on the COVID-19 epidemic and the continuing spread of the Omicron variant BA5, said to be the fastest spreading variant yet. And now major U.S. cities are taking steps to help protect their residents. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the latest. The once feared summer surge of COVID cases now in full swing in the U.S. as 85% of the country is now living in a county with high or medium risk of COVID-19 transmission. With the BA5 variant estimated to be responsible for 65% of the total daily new cases, health officials are sounding the alarm, pleading with Americans to get their booster shots. We're saying there is need to worry. Uh, this variant is, as everybody has noted, highly infectious, easily transmitted. Los Angeles County home to 10 million people now on track to return to an indoor mask mandate in two weeks. Since April, hospitalizations up 88%. In New York City, numbers there aren't improving either. The city reporting its highest new case average since January. But still, some aren't willing to take a step back. I don't feel like I need to wear a mask. Some health experts believe the BA5 variant is the most immune evasive variant we've seen so far in terms of its ability to get through immunity produced from bouts with COVID and from the vaccine. But a new study by the CDC suggests that a third dose of mRNA vaccine offered substantial protection against severe illness for the initial Omicron variants, BA1 and 2. And people previously infected with BA2 may have antibodies that can protect against illness with BA5. The vaccines on the market now still expected to protect against serious illness and death caused by the BA5 variant. Meanwhile, the FDA and CDC are considering expanding eligibility for that second booster to include all adults under 50. That's expected within the next few weeks. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. Today, the World Health Organization and UNICEF reporting more than 20 million infants are missing out on their vaccines due to the pandemic. According to WHO, this is the largest decline ever recorded in the last 30 years, and that is a big problem. The organization's data shows around 25 million children around the world are not getting their routine DTaP vaccine. It protects children from things like diphtheria and tetanus and pertussis. A doctor from Texas Biomed says there is a message here for parents. You cannot fool around with these infections. They're life-threatening infections. And I would tell parents that we've come so far in keeping our children healthy through these vaccination programs. Now is not the time to let up. UNICEF and the WHO say that the decline is due to a number of factors, things like the environment a child is being raised in, supply chain issues, and containment measures. It's still ahead for years. His home was unlivable, so he opted to live out of his backyard shed. But those living conditions no longer this Vietnam veteran's reality. We're going to tell you about the organization behind this beautiful transformation and how the project came about. Tonight at six, their talent is the bridge between street art and healing. Artists across the state working together to honor the 21 lives cut short during that school shooting in Uvalde. And three of them are from San Antonio. Tonight, Alicia Barrera introduces us to one muralist who is honoring teacher Eva Mireles and shares how the community can help with those final touches. His name is Henry Alvarado. He's a Vietnam veteran who, after years of living in a shed in his own backyard, has a new home. That's because an organization called Adapt a Vet learned about Henry's actual home being unlivable. They stepped in to help. Patty Santos explains after two year long process today, those keys were finally handed over. And his house. Tears of joy and gratitude today as Vietnam veteran Henry Alvarado and his family set foot inside the brand new home. Hi. The project started more than two years ago when the city of San Antonio's Veterans Affairs Department contacted an organization called Adapt-A-Vet. said that they had a, a veteran that needed help with their home. 
that was living in a shed in the backyard. Co-founder Michael Contugno tells us it didn't take much to agree to help out. We came out here and, and um, walked the home and saw the repairs that it needed and said, sure, we'll help you out. Contugno and his team of volunteers started raising funds and were ready to get to work. But like many things, the pandemic presented another bump to an already challenging project. The electrical was all out of, out of compliance. The plumbing was all out of compliance. It didn't have central heat in there. It had window units. We took uh, everything out all the way down to the studs. We put everything back in per code. The team restored the house from top to bottom and didn't skip on making Alvarado's new home feel safe. We made this house secure. We even put in uh, six security cameras. Form too. Giving Alvarado peace of mind in a space his family can enjoy for years to come. This room we're standing in used to be the bedroom. They wanted a dining room so they could have their family together, and so we opened it up into the kitchen. Well, Henry's been very emotional through this whole project. He just kept saying, I, I can't believe it, I can't believe it. We love helping our veterans. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Beautiful home. Yeah, welcome home. I'm glad they have central heat in there too especially central air on a day like today. Really any air, conditioning works. Yes, exactly. If it's conditioned, it's nice. And luckily today, not as hot as the past few days. And what you see off in the distance, those are a few rain showers that we have out there. And the clouds and rain will be replaced with some African dust as we get into the weekends. So we'll talk about that in a moment and when it's going to be the thickest. But we have a few downpours out there for some very lucky communities. Count your blessings today if you got the heavy rainfall and some decent accumulations. Let's start with this time lapse because I moved our live cam. This is at I-10 looking off to the northwest and you put it into motion and you see how the clouds start to build and then whoosh, that downpour that indicated by that gray shaft off in the distance. And then another one on the right hand side of the screen, that's the one that's been that's uh, moving through Stone Oak right now. So that's the other downpour that we're talking about. And you look at the 12 hour rainfall today within about 90 miles of the Gulf Coast. That's where we've had some good activity and some heavy rain. I mean, we're talking a few inches of rain in Victoria near Goliad. You get east of Hallettsville, Vienna, about four inches estimated by the radar. And so far today, you look at the downpours locally and where you see the green on the screen, that indicates about a half an inch at least of rainfall. So you get into parts of Stone Oak here, just west of Johnson High School, west of 281, and look at these numbers. Uh, this is just east of Blanco Road and uh, Camp Bullis as well, but you can plot this out a little bit, and if you're in this neighborhood here, I mean, we're talking about a half inch of rain, uh, 0.6 inches estimated by the Doppler radar, so not bad. Better than nothing, and at least some folks are getting a quick little downpour. If we look at the reflectivity right now and the actual showers out there, uh, you'll see that they're very limited, but we still, we talked about that one in Stone Oak earlier in the newscast. Now we have some nice ones moving through Comal County, and these are just west of New Braunfels and Green. These are headed toward, well, basically the Bracken Back Cave, and right along the Cibolo Creek there. These are going to be heading into Northern Bear County momentarily and even Timberwood Park. I think you're going to be get, getting hit by this downpour very soon, probably within the next 30 minutes or so. And then our last downpour, the one that we saw on our live cam develop, that has fallen apart as it moves toward Medina Lake. So that's what we have out there right now. Otherwise, no other showers to speak of at the moment, but at least we're seeing a few of these and these will be dissipating in the next couple of hours. I think by eight o'clock, it's pretty much all done. 97 are high today. It marks the first sub triple digit day so far this month. We didn't hit 100 today. It's the first time we haven't done it this month. 91 right now officially in town. 92 Catula, 95 Eagle Pass, 93 in Kerrville. No triple digits on the map. Isn't that something? Halotus down to 89 with the showers nearby and Bulverde now at 92 along with Stinson. Very humid out there. The high moisture content in the air is actually helping us out in terms of limiting our heating today. And it's going to be similar tomorrow. Very humid tonight through tomorrow morning. Tomorrow afternoon we'll see a little drop in the humidity, but nothing really significant. Uh, it's still going to be fairly muggy throughout the day. Quick look at our Saharan dust and it's going to be moving in throughout the day tomorrow, increasing tomorrow. Notice by Sunday, that's when it's the thickest and then it moves out of town for the early part of next week. So if you're susceptible to the Saharan dust, 
Sunday. That's the day. 77 tomorrow morning, 98 by the afternoon, feeling like 101, but hey, another day below 100. Sunday, back to 101, hazy and hot. And that Saharan dust is going to give us that extra haze in the sky. And unfortunately, rain chances are looking bleak. Not a shot out there after what we have today. Nothing but sunshine and then low 100s into next week. Enjoy it while it's here. Thank you. All right, we don't know what's going to happen with Deshaun Watson yet, but we do know that his former team has made a move. Yeah, they've gotten out in front of this quickly with as many as 30 women settling with them as of today. When we come back, we'll let you know what the latest is on the franchise itself, the Houston Texans and the role that they may or may not have had in his bad behavior. And the Spurs have one more shot at a victory coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Houston Texans have settled with 30 women who are prepared to make claims against the NFL franchise for enabling former star quarterback Deshaun Watson's behavior during massages. As according to Houston attorney Tony Busby, one of those 30 women had already filed a civil lawsuit against the team and the others were prepared to do the same, although the settlement was confidential. This comes after an article by the New York Times that said the team provided access to the exclusive Houstonian spa and resort where some of the massages occurred and even provided Watson with non-disclosure agreements as far back as 2020. Since that time, Watts has been traded to the Browns who wait to see if he violated the NFL's code of conduct and what punishment he may or may not face. And here is a statement by Janice McNair, Cal, and Hannah McNair, and it reads in part, we were shocked and deeply sad when we first learned of the allegations against our franchise quarterback in March of 2021, although our organization did not have any knowledge of Deshaun Watson's alleged misconduct, we have intentionally chosen to resolve this matter amicably. This is not an admission of any wrongdoing, but instead a clear stand against any form of sexual assault and misconduct. All right, San Antonio Spurs have one last shot at the victory when they face the Memphis Grizzlies tomorrow to close out their summer league play in Las Vegas. That's after they lost to the Atlanta Hawks on Thursday in Sin City to go 0-4, tying the Dallas Mavericks for the worst record. That's after the Spurs were able to get out to the lead early. Spurs first round pick at number 25 overall. Blake Wesley was a leading scorer with 20 points, 6 assists, 2 rebounds, and 2 steals. The Spurs had the early lead up 21-20 after 1. Kai Bowman rolled up 14 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists, and 2 steals to help the Spurs out to a 12 point lead prior to the half. Then the 20th overall pick, Malachi Branham, had 13 points, and the Spurs were up 70-61 going into the fourth quarter. That's when Tyson at the end came off the bench to score 21 points, rallied the Hawks to an 87-86 victory. I was just active today. Uh, we had a couple of days off. Got my body right. Got some treatment. Uh, got my mind right for the next game. Uh, and I played today's game good, so everybody played good. It just came a little short. So that final game will be tomorrow at the Thomas and Mack Arena in Las Vegas at 5 p.m. against the Grizzlies. Keldon Johnson made the trip to Las Vegas. Check out the future of the franchise. The Spurs have decided to build around the Olympic gold medalist as their new leader. It was the first time I really got to see like our, our new rookies play uh, with each other, and uh, it was it was great. They was aggressive. They showed some great flashes of what they're going to do next year for us. So uh, they definitely get a chance to play. You know, as everybody knows, we're re rebuilding. You know, we expect to come in, play hard, and, and win. Well, they're learning about how to play with each other as far as on the court is concerned and getting that done in Las Vegas. Although it's not producing any victories on the board, obviously. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Still one more chance. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. One more night. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching the News at 5 with us. See you back here at 6.